Hello YouTube, today we are going to talk about get server side props, which is a new feature in Next 9.3 and compare it with what we studied in part number two of this series called get initial props. So if you remember from that part number two, the get initial props resembles this type of code. You can do a fetch to an API and then return that people. And this code will run both on your server and every time you do navigation to this page on client side, this code runs. And you may be asking, so what's the difference to get server side props? Well, get server side props only runs on your server. It never ever runs on your browser, but don't worry. On client side navigation, the browser calls that get server side props as an API endpoint or a proxy, okay? So in the end, you will have that get server side props running as well on every single client side navigation with the added advantage that it runs on your server, which allows you to do things like calling a database directly and doing like select star from a table. Okay. So let's just compare the two codes before we start to see diagrams. So the two codes look super similar. In both of them, we are fetching an API and returning that people from that API. Just keep in mind that for get server side props, we need to put props over there. So let's start the diagrams and I think they will be helpful for us. So server side rendering will be exactly the same for get initial props and get server side props in the example I saw, I showed you before. So imagine that we go and say on your browser, www.myapplication.com. So your browser, does a request to your server. Your server, immediately after receiving that request, will run that fetch call to API slash people. That API slash people, let's imagine that it goes to a database SQL doing a select star from a table. When that query is done, we return JSON to our server from that API, and then our server does server side rendering and returns HTML to our browser. So, over here, you have the diagram or the flow of what happens on a server-side rendering on both get initial props and get server-side props. While where they are going to defer is now on client-side navigation, okay? So when your application is already loaded and you click in a link or an anchor tag and you navigate to another page like slash people or slash car or slash vehicle, okay? So let's study first, get initial props and see what happens when you do a client-side navigation. And this is the code once again for you to remember about it. So let's see what happens. You are on your browser, you navigate, and because get initial props runs on your browser, doing that fetch, you go directly to that API slash people, that API does exactly what it was doing before and returns JSON to your browser. So this is what we studied in part number two, and it makes sense. And you may be asking, okay, show me now what's the difference to get server side props. And exactly the same code, okay? So memorize that code. And now let's see the diagram. So if you are on the browser, you remember what I said. Next.js automatically calls your server in that get server side props and it runs always on your server. So the first thing that happens is this one. And then your server will run that fetch to slash API slash people and does this. After that, it does the normal thing it was doing before and your server returns JSON. The only difference at this stage to the stage where we were doing server-side rendering is that now you will return JSON and before you were returning HTML. So you may be asking now, so why did the guys in Next.js created this? This is awful. It one more jump. It doesn't make sense, right? Well, don't forget what I said before. Instead of using that fetch, we can use something nicer or something better in this case, which is a select star from people, right? So <laughs> if we do that, we will basically not need that API at all. So let's have a look into this new flow. So you navigate client side, okay? And 
your browser goes still to get server-side props, the same exact thing it was doing before, but now our server calls directly the database. Our database, when finished, returns back to our server, and our server returns the JSON back to our browser. So this is an improvement. And now, like get initial props, we only have two jumps over there with the added advantage that we don't need that API anymore because we are not even calling that one unless you have third-party applications consuming your Next.js API route, you probably don't need to maintain that one anymore, right? So this is literally what you need now. And with that, we also improved server-side rendering. Don't believe me? Let's look into the diagram. So our browser, when we go www.myapplication.com enter, does the request to your server, and now your server will go directly to the database, right? So we saved one jump over here. We don't need to go once again to our API. So this API over here can just disappear, which is great news, right? And you may be asking, well, does it even make sense? Well, read carefully this tweet. By the way, if you don't know who is Guillermo, he is the CEO or CTO, CEO, I guess, of Zeit, which is the owners or the creators of Next.js. So he knows what he's talking about, right? And someone asked him, if I understand correctly, get server-side props should obviate a lot of the past need for API routes. A common pattern I found myself doing was reproducing some logic both in get initial props for initial data load and then in a corresponding slash API slash foo, for example. And Guillermo replied and just said, yes, for a lot of use cases, this is totally true. The use cases where this is not true is the use cases when you have, for example, a third party application consuming your API endpoints. If you are in those kind of scenarios, you still need to maintain those API endpoints, okay? But if the only consumer of your data, your database, is your own application, probably you no longer need to maintain that, okay? So now let's look into the diagrams side by side for client-side rendering, okay? So when we navigate on client-side, clicking on an anchor tag. So on the left side, we have get initial props. On the right side, we have get server side props. And you can see that on get initial props, we need that API endpoint, okay? And on get server side props, we don't need that API endpoint. Let's have a look also at the comparison between server side rendering. By the way, let me just go back to the previous slide again. In this slide, you can see that we have two jumps on both, right? You go from browser to API, from API to SQL database. On the server side props, you go browser, Next.js server, and then database. So you have two jumps or two hoops, whatever you want to call them. You have two connections, two jumps, okay? Let's have a look into server side rendering. So when we go to server side rendering, let's have a look first into get initial props, if you remember. We were going from our browser doing www.myapplication.com to our server. Our server does the fetch and goes to API slash people, API slash people database, and then it goes back. So we have three jumps. In get server side props at the top right of our screen, we only have two jumps. And once again, we don't need that API. So if you don't have a third party application consuming your APIs, it's one last thing to maintain, to test and to bug fix. I think is a good benefit, right? <laughs> and so let's just, before we go back to code, let me know if you like these type of presentations with diagrams or not. If you like, I will do more of those type of presentations. If not, I will stop doing them and I will jump directly to code every time. It's up to you to let me know what you think. So I will set up VS Code and I will come back to you. Over here in VS Code, we have a new Next application and I copied four files from last week. The first one I copied was this migrations file where we have our 18 microphones and we create this database table. 
The second file I copied was this model over here. So we can have a type for our microphones that we will query from the database. After that, I also copied our open database. So we don't need to be typing open file name driver all the time. So I copied this from last week's tutorial as well. The last file I copied, and probably I didn't even need to copy this file, but I just copied it to show you that our application can now connect to the database using this snippet of code and grab all the microphones. And in order to run that, we just need to do node test migration.js and you can see that we got all the 18 microphones over there. So this is good. We can close all of those files and go to pages. And in pages at the moment, we have only this file with an index returning hello world. So we can come here and the first thing we need to do is, what do we want this uh, component to do? We want this component to probably show the JSON of all the microphones, okay? So let's just do that one first. Export index props, okay? Which is an interface. I forgot to put interface over here, okay? So we have an index props, and this one will receive a list of microphone array, okay? So we can import the microphone, and now this is the, the properties that this component is going to receive. So we will say microphones and index props. Over here, because we are saying that for now we will just return the JSON of the microphones, we can do something like this. Pre, we can close the pre tag over here and say something like json.stringify um, microphones null and for spaces like we use always here on the channel. So the component itself, we can call it done, okay? Then if we want at the end, we can just iterate over the microphones instead of just throwing them into the screen. But for the get server side props context, this is good enough. So if you remember from our presentation, the next thing we need to do is create our get server, ser get server side props. So in order to do that, we need to do this get server side props and this get server side props needs to be an asynchronous function that receives a context now because we are using typescript we can have some help from the compiler and we can come here and do this get server side props and immediately now typescript is starting to complain at us because well we are not returning anything. So let's start to return. And if you also remember from our slides, we need to return these props. And doing this alone, TypeScript stops complaining. So what we can do over here, we can go to our database and do a select star from microphones. So let's do that. Database equals to await open database. Now that we have our database open, we can say microphones, it will be an await of db dot all select star from microphones. And this is literally what we want. Over here, we can even typify this and say microphone array. Okay. And now these microphones, we will pass them inside there. Again, because we are using TypeScript, we can even use this generic version and do index props. So now we know that we are sending the index props we need for this index component okay so typescript helping us out so let's see if this all that we did for now is even running because probably it's not even running so let's test this first and while this one is doing his magic we can just open our browser just to force it and i even open it two times good job so while that one is running and it will compile we can create one more component and we can call this one, I don't know, people is a good name, probably it is. So let's call it people.tsx and we can do export default function people, right? And over here for now, we can just return h1 hello people, right? So this one will have no um, database, uh, it will have no get server side props, index will have get server side props. And I already saw that I did a mistake. I called it microphones instead of microphone in my query. 
So if we save that one now and go to our browser, we see that over here we have the list of microphones, which is exactly what we were expecting. And if we go to people, we should see hello people. So up to this point, everything is working as we expect. So let's do one more thing. We can create in these people, we can just create something random. Let's say const export, sorry export const get server site props okay and we can say get server site props and we can return for example just a people props that we will create in a second so don't worry typescript is complaining and is super right to complain so let's just do props and now over here let's create export interface people props and people props can be what? Can be an array of names is good enough, right? So we will have a string array of names. And over here, we don't even need to go to our database. Let's just return something because for what I want to show you, this is just good enough. John, Michael, and I don't know, Bruno. Okay, so we will pass this over here. We will say names and we will deep do people props okay people props and these names we can say something like jason or even better we can do this properly we can do this properly we can do names okay dot map and we will do name return h2 of uh, name over here and we can put this inside the div, for example, and close the div over there. So if we format this, we are literally looping over um, our, um, our names and putting our names. So we can say also key equals to name because that's the error we are seeing here. Okay, we are not passing a key to our names. So doing that no longer um, we have that message, so we can go to our page, refresh, and now we have John, Michael, and Bruno. So this is working as you may expect. So the next step I want to do is to create uh, a place for us to navigate between the two components. So let's create over here on our people component, right? Let's come here and say link and I will import link in a second and we will say anchor tag of um, index it's good enough calling it index right I don't have any better idea at the moment of recording so let's import it from lex slash link and now we can go back from index to uh, sorry from people to index and we can do exactly the same thing to be able to navigate from index to people so we can come here say a div okay do this and now we can even do this okay so importing this link import link from next slash link okay and now when we go to our browser we will be able to navigate between the two pages. So until this point, if I now open the browser tools for you, you can see that when I'm in people and I click here, I go to my index page and I did what I was explaining to you before. Next.js automatically called our get server side props client side. So we receive these page props as the microphones so all our microphones are here and this was kind of a api endpoint that next created for us to proxy or to reveal our get server side props the same will happen if i clear this the same will happen when i navigate from index uh, from um, uh, people to index so oops i put the url wrong right yes i did good job again bruno <laughs> I'm sorry, I make so many typos on these things. So after our page refreshes, now we have a people over there. So we can click on these people, clear this, and clicking on people, I will do a call to a people JSON endpoint that you can see it was creating on underscore next slash data slash development slash people dot JSON. And this one 
once again, if I go to preview, we can see the three names that we were returning in get server side props. So I will just illustrate one more thing to you before we implement something nice for your pages. So let me show you something. If over here, let's simulate that our database query, instead of being instant, like it is right now, it will take, let's say, two seconds. It's probably good enough for what I want to, to show you. So let's do await new promise ACC. Okay, and let's say set timeout of uh, ACC, let's say two seconds. It's probably good enough. Three seconds probably is easier for us to see what's going on, okay? So what I'm doing over here, if you don't understand this line of code, is literally I'm awaiting three seconds before my code returns over there, okay? It's kind of a sleep if you use Java or some other languages, they have thread sleeps and things like that. So this is kind of that, okay? So if we go now back, and I'm in people, and if I navigate to index, I don't navigate for those three seconds. Only when that API call is finished, which took exactly those three seconds, okay, if we go to timing, we can see that the duration of that call was exactly those three seconds. So while that call is being executed, okay, we don't navigate. And we saw this exact problem when we were using get initial props on part number two of this series. So we have multiple ways to avoid that, but I think the cleanest one is the way that GitHub does it. So let me go to GitHub and show you what GitHub is doing. I personally like it, so I will show you how you can do that in Next.js. So I zoomed it and now I will click in code and see this blue bar. Did you see this blue bar going on? Okay, I will click one more time. And that blue bar can be achieved with something called n progress. So if we go to npm.js, I have it over here already. So this n progress library can do exactly this for us. So let's go to their own page and they have examples for us. So clicking over here, you will see that's really similar to what um, GitHub is doing. And this one is slow for some reason. So while that one is slow, we can just go and, oops, okay, it's loading. So you can see that we can click start, okay? And start will go slowly, 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 slowly. And then when you click done, it just completes the, the full. So what I will do is, I will npm install this bit, okay? And while that thing is going to be installing, I will just cut the video and come back when it's finished because as you saw, my internet is quite slow today. So I will come back in a second. The npm install already finished. On top of that, I also did a git commit so you can follow along what I'm doing. So now let's go to our browser. And the next thing we need to do is to understand how to do a custom app in Next.js. So if we go to custom app Next.js, we will go to the Next.js documentation, search for TypeScript and click over here. And literally you may be asking, what is that app? Well, this app is the container of all our components in an XJS application. So when you are navigating from, for example, index to people, those two components represent this component over here, okay? So when you are in index, this component means index. When you are in people, this component will mean people. So I can even do something like this. If I do a div over here and I type, for example, welcome to my app, okay? Welcome to my app, even with a typo, but it's good enough. You will see that that welcome to my app will be in every single screen of your application. And so this is a really good place for us to listen to the Next.js router events. And the router events from Next.js are something like this, router.events.on. And now the events are a string. So I think one of them is route to change start or start change. We will check in the documentation in a second. And then over here is an handler. And this handler also receives the URL you are navigating to. But in our case, 
we don't need that we will just do console.log on start okay so we put it over there and now we go to the next JS and we say router events okay which are those and these are literally the three events we care about so let me just zoom for you so when I start a navigation when that navigation is completed or if that navigation timed out or errored or something like that so we can grab those three okay and I can go to my VS code and leave it over there so I can have one I even was right on the name so the second one and the third one so let me copy one and another one and so right now our navigation over here will be on complete and this one will be on error so we can do npm run dev and while our server is going to start we can just come here do another look at it and see okay what we want is the end progress dot start so we can just put it here as a comment okay let me just do localhost 3000 at least it will start to load and we can even come here and just leave a comment for that because we will need that and the other one was end progress dot done so we will need those two so they are already there as a comment right so let's see what happens when i click index going to index it's the one that takes quite a while and so let's open f12 and on the console I should have on start, on start, on complete, on complete. So let's navigate to people and we have a start and a complete. Clicking on index, oops, my bad. Clicking on index, the start happened and only when the complete happens, we receive that. So it's doing exactly what we need. So we can do this. We can come here and do import and progress from and progress right and over here we can do and progress dot start and replace this line with and progress dot start and these two lines with and progress dot end right so we can delete these comments and now i know that and progress also has um some css so let's just check the name of the css file uh, it's over here it's called and progress.css okay so we can come to our next js application and do and progress slash and progress.css so we will import the css and it will be loaded on the app component which is as i said available for every single page so going back to our application and now we are on people we can even delete that and clicking in people let me just zoom in for you oops let me zoom in and when i click on index you will see that we have that blue bar at the top and it's doing exactly what github is doing so clicking when it's fast it's fast when it's slow it's incrementally going on when it's finished it goes on hmm. there is one thing that i don't like over there which is that weird spinner so we can do this copy and say that we don't want the spinner so let's put the spinner to not show again so going again over here sorry an alarm on my phone so going back again over here what i'm doing clicking on people and now clicking on index i don't see the spinner anymore which is well exactly what we wanted to achieve in the first place let me see over here if there is any other thing we want to use I don't know if we have anything over here that could be nice but let's see this let's copy this and see what it does i don't even know it's the first time i'm trying these properties as well so let's see if we can see any visible change so let's go over here refresh and now while that thing is refreshing and it finished we can go and well, I'm always clicking on the wrong side of the mouse. So uh, it seems the same, but well, <laughs> you can probably play around with those tickle speeds and even these rates. This is the rate as it increases, if I'm not mistaken. So let's say the rate it increases is 10% every 300 milliseconds. 
I think that's what it means. So let's give it a try. Going back, going to people first because people is our fast page, clicking there. Ah, oh, yeah, it's exactly that. Now I went too fast. But you can play around with that. Um, and you usually know from your metrics how slow or how fast is your APIs. So you can play this for the worst case scenario. And if your API takes three seconds, you can say that on every 10% 10, 10 takes, let's say, half a second. So you give a room for error because if you have something like I have here, which I'm increasing too fast, then it reaches the end and well, it's probably not a good user experience. So you should play with it, make it roughly correct for your API or in the best scenario, you probably just don't put those and the initial scenario is just good enough, right? So I really hope this tutorial was helpful and especially the initial part where you saw the diagrams and the flows of data and what was going on. I think it's helpful to understand those. And as I asked in the beginning or, or in the middle of the video, I would love to understand if you like those type of presentations with those workflows or not. Let me know in the comments or if you want in private in Facebook or Reddit, wherever you prefer to send me a message. And once again, if you liked, like the video, subscribe to the channel and thank you very much. We are already above 500. So thank you very much for your support along the journey. Thank you. Bye-bye.